All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another green screen tutorial in Unreal Engine 4. Now, this right here is definitely a work in progress. I am still working a lot of kinks out, but I decided to make this video because I want to see if people can solve what I'm running into. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be keying a live screen footage using a DSLR plugged into an Elgato Camlink 4K. And then we're going to be using my iPhone as a camera tracker mounted on top of the DSLR so that when I move the DSLR, the camera inside Unreal Engine 4 moves as well. I know it's a lot. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a new blank template. We're going to name this mom. All right, create project. All right, let's go ahead and get this interrogation environment added to your mom. And then go back in Unreal. It's only 80 meg, so it shouldn't take that long. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is enable some plugins. Built in, we're going to do Apple. AR kit. We're going to do virtual camera. All of these right here. Yes, 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 restart now. Okay, so let's go ahead and minimize, minimize. Let's go to our content browser, interrogation, maps, interrogation, and that should load it up. Oh my goodness, this doesn't look right. So what we're going to do is go to our world outliner. We're going to type in post process, click on that, go to exposure, metering mode, manual. I always check manual and then just you know, turn it up as so. All right, let's slow down the camera. The default is so freaking fast. Let's turn it up a little bit more. All right. All right, so let's move this cup. And that too. Oh man, okay, it doesn't matter. It looks like the, um, the imprint is on the table, but it's okay. So the point of this video is we're gonna put a live green screen footage on top of this table, key it, and then move it around using the DSLR and the iPhone app Unreal Remote 2. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and create a new folder. Right click new folder, footage, double click, right click media, media player, click output text, texture asset, press OK. Leave it by default is all right. We are now going to create a plane, drag and drop it to the scene, move it up towards the table, rotate it 90 degrees. Now I'm not going to rotate this just yet because something weird happens happen here sometimes. So we'll go back to your media player. We're going to turn on our DSLR real quick. Okay. The DSLR is on link it to the cam link. Perfect. I'm going to turn the brightness up a little bit. Let me change the aperture. All right. That is pretty much one of the nice things about doing this live is you can actually adjust it on the fly. All right. Save that. We're going to copy this control minimize. Go ahead and drag and drop this t uh, media texture and it's going to create a new media texture. And that's why I said I wasn't rotating it around just yet. Click on the plane. 1.78 is the aspect ratio of my Canon DSLR. So that's good. We're going to go to blueprint, open level blueprint, delete these two, create a new variable, media player, right click, event begin play, drag and drop that media, get, click the media. We're going to change the variable type to media player. And then we're going to go object reference. Okay. That's fine. It's going to search for any other object reference. Sometimes it does this, but that's okay. So minimize is fine. All right. We're going to drag and drop it here. And then we're going to do open URL. We're going to paste that URL. We just copied. We're going to connect this little diamond, bright diamond baseball thing, and then compile, save and then minimize, All right? Press play. Okay. It's not there. We missed one and I realized it. 
right after I saved it. Go to the media, drag and drop, media player, compile, save, minimize, play. Voila, now our live footage is in the scene, and this is live. I'm going to show you, change the, uh, okay. Alright, so that is a live footage feeding in using the Elgato Camlink 4K. Alright, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to create uh, a keyer. We're going to key this out so we can only see the green. So double click the texture. We're going to disconnect, alt left click. We are going to click the RGB, drag it, and we're going to go with MF. Stands for MF Chroma Keyer. Put that in the middle. Put the emissive color to emissive, opacity to opacity, and opacity to opacity masks. And then we're going to save. We're going to click on this right here, the video mat. We're going to change this to transparent or translucent. Press save. Go back. All right. And what we're going to do now is create a material instance. Right click, material instance. I'm not going to change the name. Actually, let's change the name. First instance. Okay. Now we're going to double click that. And now the options that we just created with the original are all enabled. And let me just move this away for now. Okay. We're going to turn on the keyer. We're going to click this color. Get the eyedropper. And then we're going to try and key this green. Voila, that looks good. And now we're going to mess around with some options here. Now, I'm not going to try and get the perfect keyer here, guys. This is, we're just going to do something quick. And I'm going to save it. And as you can see, nothing's really changing. Well, it's because we have to apply that new material instance to that footage, okay? So let's go ahead and zero this out. There you go. Now, we can mess around and see if we can get a good key out of this. Now, I do have two tones of green. Um, I'm using two different green screens, so that's why it's not keying as well on the ground plane. But that's okay. Let's go ahead and crop it. Crop right. And then crop the top. Oh, I said top, not left. Okay, that's fine, just like that. All right. So let's go ahead and um, get some key out of this. And if you want to mess around with it more, obviously you can. But um, we're just doing a quick and dirty key here. Okay. Now, the only good thing about using Composure is, is that it has more keying tools than this. Okay. Let me go ahead and save this. And obviously you can spend a lot more time than what I'm doing here. Okay. Let's see. Change the Luma mask again. Go. Increase the Luma mask. Shrink it again. Okay. So that's pretty decent. That's a pretty decent key. Let's save. Okay, and now we can move this around, which is awesome. We'll press Q, and I'm going to just try and see if I can have it touching the table there. Okay, obviously it is a 2D element, so, you know. Okay. Save it all. All right. Press play. It's there. That's amazing. All right. So the problem number one. I'm going to be using the Unreal Remote 2. With my phone, I'm not going to be showing you how to set this up because it's really easy. Uh, if you need help, go ahead and check out the video in the comments below on how to set this up. But basically, we're going to be using the Unreal Remote 2 on my iPhone. And we're going to control the camera inside here. But what I'm going to show you here in a second is I have the iPhone mounted on top of the DSLR. So, theoretically, what I want to happen is when I move the DSLR, moving this footage, the box... I am also moving the camera and the environment inside right here. The problem is, and I can't figure it out, every time you turn on the virtual camera mode in Unreal Engine 4, it creates a new camera. 
And that is a big problem because I have to match the DSLR to the view of the Unreal Engine 4 virtual, virtual camera mode. So let me show you what I mean. So with Unreal Remote 2, make sure you're connected to the same exact Wi-Fi as your phone and your computer that you're using. So let's go ahead and go to World Settings. We're going to change the game mode to virtual camera mode. And I'm going to go ahead and set up my phone. Okay, so what we're going to do now is turn on Unreal Engine Remote 2 on my cell phone. I'm going to wake up the camera. I'm going to wake up my phone. All right, and now when I press play, it's going to connect to my Unreal Engine 4 app on my phone. And you're going to see that the uh, field of view will change. You see that how screwed, see how that just kind of moved and it's not right. It's a little bit tilted and you can see it right here on the bricks. So basically what we need to do is since that camera, if I go here, it created a new camera inside so what we need to do is we need to control that default camera that the app is spawning so that it looks right all right and that depending on your scene that can get very complicated so to fix that we're going to press stop we're going to go to view options i think you already have show engine content on make sure this is on click on this scroll all the way down virtual camera content and now you're going to see where this camera is pulling from so basically, these are the components that the app is pulling from. And I accidentally just found this. <laughs> so let's click on, double click virtual camera player controller. And it's going to open this. All right. And you're going to see right here a tracker post offset. The rotation is what we're trying to fix because it is a little bit skewed. So right here is trial and error until I figure out how to fix this. Okay. So press play and this is going to connect to my phone again you're going to see that it's going to change view here there you go all right so that's a little bit better so we're going to go ahead and stop and like i said depending on your scene this can take a while so and it doesn't look like it's letting me do that so let's close it right here it looks like it's bugged so open it back up let's go to negative 13 compile save minimize play but basically what you're trying to do is matching the camera to the DSLR, all right? And as you can see, that is still off because what you want is actually the box in front because the box is in front of the DSLR, as you can see with this camera right here. Now, let's turn on the UI on the phone. So press edit, project settings, because you can technically control the left and right and up and down on the app so you can't technically do that but you want to still get the rotation right so if i watch what i'm going to do here watch So I'm able to move that um, camera using the app by using the, the, the thumb wheel thingies, but it's still crooked. So that's why we're having to do this. And the only thing is you can't rotate in the app itself. You can only do left and right, but not like rotate completely. So make sure, so pretty much rotation, you're going to have to rely on doing it just the way we've been doing it by just trial and error. Okay, so now that we have that live, I'm going to minimize it and I'm going to show you that it is live. It just turned off, so it's not live.
what I'm doing right now is just I'm stabilizing it because you can see it's kind of shaking a little bit. So now, in theory, I can now move my DSLR and it should move the phone camera or the camera inside as well in Unreal Engine 4. Let's do that. So you can see what the theory is. You can kind of see what I'm trying to do here because when reviewing items such as cameras and so and so, I'm actually trying to go ahead and move to Unreal Engine 4 because I'm getting tired of all the B-roll starting to look the same online on YouTube. So that's my plan with this. Um, but as you can see, it's not perfect. Whenever I am tilting up and down, there's some kind of rotation going on that I really don't like. Um, additionally, it's, it's just not as smooth as I would like. That's pretty much it, guys. Obviously, it is not perfect. There's still a lot of stuff that I need to figure out. Uh, but it's pretty crazy that a game engine can do something like this with a couple of workarounds. Now, this is what really excites me with the upcoming Unreal Engine 5. Because I can guarantee you, I'm hoping that it's going to be much better as far as trying to do stuff like this. So if you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer it if I could. But just so you know that I've only been using this software for two months. So I might not have the answer for you. And additionally, if you guys don't mind, make sure to vote for my CGI short film that I made inside Unreal Engine 4. In the links below, I would truly appreciate that.